Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So, um, continuing with some more interpreting information then. So I had a lot more requests for um, more of the database questions. So I've got two more here just for you guys. Um, and if you haven't checked out any of my earlier interpreting information videos, I would highly, highly recommend if you guys can do that as well. Since, um, yeah, I've gone through a variety of examples, all of which are meant to be slightly different and prov provide unique aspects on things. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So as always, you guys can take a pause, see if you can do this one. So during a university presidential election, two candidates debated on three policy issues over the course of three weeks. The graph shows the student sentiment by way of unique tweets received on the university's online platform after each debate. So candidate B fared better in terms of evoking a response from the students. Okay, so just by eyeballing it, you can see that, so we're looking at number of tweets here, that for transport policy, the, the candidate A is going to have way more. Okay, so here's going to have way more. And candidate, this one's a bit closer, but still going to have more. And here it's still going to have more. So I would say the first one is going to be no, because uh, they there's more tweets for candidate A in regards to each of the, these three key ideas. So students felt most strongly about transport issues at the university campus. Well, once again, if I just roughly eyeball it, I feel like, yep, that's going to be true. Because you can see that... For each of them, for candidate A, you can see like the numbers go down and it's similar for candidate B as well. So therefore, the most strongest one is definitely transport policy. Once again, you can do the exact numbers if you really want to do the calculation to go ahead and check. But remember, eyeballing is a really, really useful skill. OK, so students became increasingly critical of candidate A over um, the course of the three debates. OK, increasingly critical of candidate A. So you can see the thumbs up slightly decreases. And the thumbs down decreases by quite a lot. So I would argue no for this because they, I don't think they become increasingly critical. In fact, they decrease their criticalness or critique. Library and internet usage at the university was the least priority concern of the students. Um, I'd say it was probably the hardship blown on policy, actually. Just once again, just eyeballing it roughly, you can see that this in total, if you added up each of the individual bar charts, is going to be less than this one. OK, so that's no there. So students became increasingly less engaged with candidates during the course of the three debates. I would say with that one, that's probably going to be true, because like we said, there was a downward trend for both sets. OK, so a little bit more of a straightforward question as opposed to some of the more data, like some of the other data style questions that we've seen earlier on. But the important point that I want to illustrate here is, you know, you don't necessarily have to take the time to do every single tiny uh, little calculation. This is very definitely eyeballable. OK, um, and that's a very, very important thing to understand. OK, so um, let's go to this question then. Oh. OK, so with this question, um, the grid shows a plot of the leadership styles of five managers. Both the X axis and the Y axis have a range of naught to nine. OK, so and it gives us some ideas. This is a different one, um, different style of data. So you can see here you've got the leadership grid, concern for people, concern for production, and it kind of places things in different areas. So once again, if you'd like to take a pause, and I'll go through it at the um, after you guys have um, had a go. Okay, so Jerome's leadership style is the hardest to diagnose. Well, it says Jerome's is here. You see Jerome has very low concern for people and very little concern for production. Um, I think it's quite easily definable, if anything. Okay, and you can see Sean, for example, is the exact opposite. I would argue that Erica probably is the hardest to place because she's dead centre. She's quite average for production, average for concern. So for that reason, I would say uh, hardest to diagnose. This is going to be no. Emily's leadership style is heavily task orientated and autocratic. So Emily's, you can see it says concern for production. So heavily task oriented. And so she has very high concern for production and she has low concern for people. And that's basically... Um, what the idea of being autocratic is. Okay, so an autocratic rule, ru like uh, ruler, is basically someone who has all the control. Okay, so clearly doesn't not really don't really care about the people, has very little concern for people. So I would say yes here. Jack's human oriented approach makes him the most efficient manager. Well, Jack does have a very um, um, human oriented approach, but. We don't know anything really about efficiency. And if we are trying to say that production is about efficiency, is like the um, factor for efficiency, you can see here Jack has very low production. So I'd say this is no either way. Like I'm not too sure what which style it's trying to hint at. But I would say that if it's, first of all, it's probably no because they didn't really mention anything about efficiency. But secondly, if it's trying to say that production is linked to efficiency, even then Jack has very low production. 
Emily displays the greatest fear of jeopardising relationships with team members. I would argue no again, because she clearly has no concern for people. So she clearly doesn't have a fear about that. Sean's team has great potential to be productively efficient whilst being motivated and satisfied. Well, I would say yes, because he, as a leader, has very high concern for people and very high concern for production. So I would say yes to both of these accounts. Okay, so... Okay, this is how I would do it overall. So I know this video is a little bit shorter than normal, um, but just wanted to get some more questions out there um, since you guys, I thought, perhaps might find it useful. Okay, so um, as always, the uh, the VRs and uh, the VR mock and the, um, S uh, the full UCAT mock will also be coming out soon as well. Um, so please do keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, please do comment if you're finding the videos helpful. It's really nice to see the comments. And also, please do let me know exactly what you want. So I had a couple of people tell me that they wanted interpreting information questions, hence why I decided to do them. Um, so yeah, exactly. Just exactly what you want. Please do let me know and I'll do my best um, to upload those videos. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.